the Bible to the cross from the cross. Every Bible story has three components. First, God's law. Second, God's compassion. Third, God's miracle. Opening your Bible opens miracles. The Bible as one story is holy enough in our lives. Day 142, Psalms 10 to 18. Only God is my blessing. Since David had faith in God, he was able to entrust each moment of every day to him and not become impatient even when God was silent. First point. David confessed that God's words were like silver that had been refined seven times by the clay porter. Psalm chapter 11 is David's wisdom poem. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord is on his heavenly throne. He observes everyone on earth. His eyes examine them. The righteous person that God spoke about was not someone without sin, but someone who confessed their sin. The reason David was able to live a life in front of God despite his many hardships was because he tried to live according to the way that God wanted. David said that a way to distribute between the righteous and the wicked was through the words that they spoke. We can tell who is wicked through the words that they say. A wicked boasts and rebukes God. David was distressed because of the wicked people around him. But the more the people around him said wicked things, the more he wanted to follow in God. And the words of the Lord are flawless like silver purified in a crucible, like gold refined seven times. We should praise God who stays and protects the weak until the end. Second point, David wrote about the person who could stand in God's dwelling place. David started his prayers in Psalm chapter 15 with, Lord, who may dwell in your sacred tent? Who may live on your holy mountain? This was David telling himself to keep to his own question. David then went on to describe the person who had the right to stand in God's dwelling tent. The person was to be righteous, trustful, someone who did not rebuke or point out other people's flaws, someone who did not do evil to their neighbor, someone who feared God, someone who did not accept bribery, and someone who obeyed God and served their neighbors. These were all based on God's laws. Third point, David confessed that God was his ultimate blessing. David confessed that God was his ultimate and only blessing. Keep me safe, my God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. I say of the holy people who are in the land, they are the noble ones in whom is all my delight. Amid his worst suffering, David prayed and praised God's salvation. David truly believed in the resurrection of the Spirit. Later, Peter referred to David's confession. Seeing what was to come, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay. Paul also made a reference to this, so it is also stated elsewhere. You will not let your Holy One see decay. David confessed, Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my Lord secure. Someone who believes in God is able to confess that all that they possess belongs to God and has been given by God. That person could also confess that God is their porter and that they have been molded by God. Yet you, Lord, are our Father. 
or you are the clay, you are the potter, or you are the work of your hands. With this faith, David was able to stay strong through all his distress. I will praise the Lord, who counsels me even at night. My heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him and my right hand, I will not be shaken. Fourth point, David confessed that he was most pleased being made in God's likeness. Psalm chapter 17 was written when David was being chased. Each time, David faced a dangerous and distressful situation. Instead of complaining, David called out to God and asked for God's salvation. David was a politician, a soldier, and a great king who led Israel to peace and prosperity. In Psalms, we can furthermore see how David was a man of earnest prayer. David was a king who lived to serve God and to live his righteousness and justice. David, who was born as a shepherd, left his name as the greatest king of Israel. David saw his enemies storing up goods for them and their children. At this, he said, By your hand, save me from such people, Lord, from those of this world whose reward is in this life. May what you have stored up for the wicked fill their bellies. May their children gorge themselves on it, and may there be leftovers for their little ones. David moreover confessed that he was storing up his goods in heaven. This reference was later used in the New Testament. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. Fifth point, David truly confessed that he loved God. Psalm chapter 18 was written by David after he was anointed as king. He felt truly grateful to God and therefore sang his praises. Thus, it is beneficial to read this together with 2 Samuel chapter 22. David managed to turn his hardships into a song of praise to God. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock, in whom I take refuge. My shield and the horn of my salvation my stronghold, I called to the Lord, who is worthy of praise, and I have been saved from my enemies. David's life was far from peaceful or perfect. From his teen years, he endured countless hardships and dangerous situations. But all throughout his life, he always put God at the center, even when his life was at risk. Thus, David always had a strength in God. As for God, his way is perfect. The Lord's word is progress. He shoulders all who take refuge in him. David had a few opportunities to kill Saul, but he never laid hands on his body. However, this meant that he had to spend a substantial amount of time learning a way. It may appear that keeping the word of God is at times harmful, but David knew that it was the way of truth. David truly lived a life of believing in God at times of difficulty. I am thrilled that you have downloaded the Tondoc app. The Tondoc app is not like any other app in the world today, as well as in the body of Christ today. Dr. Biyongo Zhou has devoted his entire life to teaching men and women like yourself to understand the entirety of the Word of God as a masterful and beautiful story from Genesis to Revelation. 
Dr. Zhou is a sought after speaker worldwide. He's a cutting edge pastor and leader. He is a renowned theologian and a prolific writer. And you're going to be equipped and energized like never before to understand and apply the Word of God into your life. Again, thank you for downloading the Tondoc app.